Hey everyone, this is a lesson on basic differentiation rules. And so here's the, the idea behind this. So using the definition of the derivative, you know, using like the whole limit formula, it's a bit tedious and it just takes a long time and it's, it's kind of difficult. So we have differenti differentiation rules that make life a lot easier. And so I'm gonna go through some of the basic ones with you in this video. So let's start out with the derivative of a constant. So here's the idea. You're gonna have a function that equals just a number, any constant that you want then the derivative of that constant is just always equal to zero. That's it. So let's say that I have this example here. So let's say I have this. So for all of these, I'm gonna always have an example that goes with it. So we wanna find the derivative for all the functions that I'm gonna give us. So in this case, I've got f of x equals six. Therefore, what would f prime of x equal? Well, it would just equal zero according to this rule. Okay, cool. So moving on, now let's talk about the power rule. So for this one, you have some function of the form x to the n. Now n does have to be some sort of number. And to then take the derivative of this, basically you bring the n down and then you subtract one from it. So let's pretend that my f of x is equal to uh, three, x to the 3 halves. So how would I find the derivative then? Well, I would bring the 3 halves down and then I need to subtract one from it, just like this. So then my answer is going to be, in this case, 3 halves times x to the 1 half. So that's the idea. Moving on to the constant multiple rule. So in this one, um, you have the, the idea behind this is that you have some number, k, times f of x. So if you want to take the derivative of this, so here's the, the idea then of, I just put parentheses around this, put the prime symbol. Well, basically the idea behind this is that nothing really happens to the constant. You just take the derivative of the, the actual function that you see. So let's take a look at an example of this. So I've got four X to the seventh. So the idea here being that X to the seventh is the, the real thing that I need to take the derivative of. So if I wanna take the derivative of this, here's how this is gonna look. I've got four times, so I bring the seven down. And then once again, I'll subtract one here. So this ultimately equals 28x to the sixth, and that would be the derivative. So moving on to the sum rule, so let's say that you're adding two functions, f of x and g of x. Then if you wanna take the derivative of them, you're gonna have f prime of x plus g prime of x. And so this is actually a pretty simple rule. I think it's actually pretty intuitive um, in that you, you probably would do this without really thinking about it. So in this case, so first I just have to take the derivative of five x squared which is 10x, and then the derivative of any constant is zero, so I can just write 10x, and that's actually the whole derivative in this case. So moving on to the next one, so we've got the natural exponential function, so this would be e to the x, so if you have a function that's e to the x. Easiest derivative that we have, it's just e to the x. Um, so you'd have to actually take a look at the formal definition of the derivative to understand why that is. But just to show you an example, so here's a place where e to the x actually shows up. So if I wanna take the derivative of this, so I've got f prime of x. So here I'm gonna use the constant multiple rule, so nothing happens to the five. And then the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And then this is minus seven. So now you've gotta remember with, with this part here, so the square root of x is the same thing as x to the one half. So just keep that in mind. So this is gonna be seven times one half x to the one half minus one, so this ends up becoming five e to the x minus seven over two x to the negative one half, or you could write that as a fraction, whatever you want. Okay, so now we move on to the product rule. So now let's say that I'm multiplying two functions, f and g together. So then their derivative will look like this. You've got f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. So this one's a little bit longer. So um, I am going to actually give myself a little extra space for this. Now there's more than one way that we could do this, but we're gonna use this just, we're gonna do this just doing the product rule and following along with that. So if I wanted to take the derivative of this function, so this is my first function. So this one here, this is what I wanna think of as my f of x. And then this part here, this is gonna be my g of x. Now, at this point in the video, you might feel like you've kind of got the basic rules down up to this point. I'd highly recommend pausing here and trying to actually use this rule and kind of putting everything together and then hitting play when you're ready. 
Okay, so first I have to take the derivative of f of x. So I'm going to go ahead and just write that out. Oops, I'll write it in uh, green. So the derivative of f of x, this is just 6x. And I leave the e to the x alone, okay? And then I'm going to add to this. So now I leave the first part alone. So this 3x squared minus 5x, I leave that part alone. And then I multiply this by the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x. So here would be the entirety of that problem. Now, it's up to you if you want to simplify that. One way you could simplify that is you could actually just factor out e to the x and then write this as 3x squared plus 6x minus 5. So it, um, different books will simplify in different ways. It's really worth your time to make sure that you do understand how a book actually simplified something. There's usually a lot of really good algebra review in that. And we're starting to get to a point in calculus where knowing all that algebra and being really strong on it is going to become very important. So up next we have the quotient rule. So let's say I've got f of x divided by g of x. So the derivative of that is a little bit of a mess here. So I've got f prime of x times g of x minus f of x times g prime of x, all of that over g squared of x. Now everybody has different ways of kind of remembering this. Um, I always just kind of remember with the product rule and the quotient rule, I always just remember to take the derivative of you know, um, the first function. So in the first function here, so I think of the, the top function or the first function with the product rule, that's the way I think of it. Um, I know there's, I'm sure if you search the internet, you'll find all sorts of different ways to kind of remember this rule. So you do you however you need to remember it. But just to show you an example of this, so let's say I want to take the derivative of this. So I need to first take the derivative of the top. So the derivative of 5x is 5, and then I multiply that by the bottom, okay? Now I subtract off, so I take, I leave the 5x alone, and then I multiply this by the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom is just e to the x again. And then all of that will get divided by e to the x squared. Now in this case, you'll notice that you can actually simplify this. We've got e to the x and e to the x and then two e to the x's here. So if I wanted to simplify this, this would be five minus five x over e to the x. So for your viewing pleasure, I have a list of all of the rules here. So you can always pause the video and just write down the rules if you need to do that. So there's the first one and then here's the other list that we went through. So if you're in my class, you actually do have to recite all of these rules on the test and it is, uh, tends to be an all or nothing question. So these are very, very important for calculus. It's like one of the backbone things that you absolutely have to know to get through both Calc 1, Calc 2, and then also you need to really understand this when you get to Calc 3. So very, very foundational stuff right here. So that covers it for this video. So I know I only went through one example for each rule, but I do have other videos where I go through a lot more examples showing off those rules. So if you're looking for more examples, feel free to check those out and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.